Hi guys and welcome in the video number 7 of this scientific backtesting guide. In this video, we'll learn how to analyze all the methods that we have seen, how to rate them to say if the output of this method is good or not. As always, you can find a blog post associated to this YouTube video on my blog and you can find the link in the description. So I really advise you to take a look to both to be sure you understand all the things I want to explain you. And this video, as all the videos in this playlist, is sponsorized by the AlphaCon program, a quant trading program that combines e-learning videos, 7 day of a 7 support, and real life quant trading monthly projects. So if you are interested by taking your trading to the next level, take a look in the description. So on this video, we will see three different examples. The first one, we will really detail it, each thing that we need to know, how we create our notation, and then we'll go a bit more quick on the next one. So the first thing is the walk forward optimization. The walk forward optimization will give us output, a returns and a drawdown chart. But as I said in the previous blog post, I don't want to automate this process because you always need to take a human eyes on it to be sure you will not put to the trash really good strategies and you will not keep wrong strategies, okay? Here, we can see that the return follow a very good upward trend. We don't have a huge drawdown, so we don't have a lot to, to say about. Here, we have a time underwater, so the time we recover this drawdown a bit high, okay? So I will give a nine over 10. And that's why also you need to create a trading bot portfolio that because if you only follow this trading strategy, you will not earn money this year, for example. But if you use five or 10 trading strategies, when you will combine them, the earning of the other will reduce the losses of the other, etc. And so if you have profitable trading strategies on the long term and you combine them, it will reduce your risk and keep a comfortable return. So that's very interesting to create a portfolio, but it's not the goal of this video. The second thing about this trading strategy is the probability of overfitting, which is quite good, lower than two. So it's obviously a 10. Generally, I give a seven when the probability of overfitting is equal to 10%. And I give around eight, nine when it's close to 5%. And when it's below, I give a 10 for sure. So the next thing is the sharp ratio distribution. Here we can see that we have only a few data below zero and a lot of data above one. So it's a nine. Here, the first backtest that I'm showing you is a very, very good backtest, but very stay for the lagged backtest because it will show you why robustness testing is so important. Then we have the return simulations. The goal here is to take a look to the projection, to be sure that after one year, for example, the odds to have a losing trading strategy is not high. And here it's close to 7%, maybe, maybe 10%. So it's not too much, but it's quite high in the same time, okay? So I will give a six over 10. The next thing to check is the risk of win. Uh, here, we have the drawdown distribution and for sure it's a 10 over 10, okay? The worst drawdown is around 4%, so it's very, very, very amazing. So now we need to aggregate these results. And to do that, it's pretty simple. We have rate each method and we'll compute the average. Here it's around 8.5. And if the average is higher or equal to seven, you can put your strategy in paper trading and maybe in live trading if you have good results. But even if your trading strategy is rated higher than seven, you have a better power. You can just say, I don't want to use this trading strategy for any reason. For example, I don't know, maybe all the different parameters here are amazing, but the risk of win is very, very high, okay? You have, I don't know, the, the average drawdown around 15 and the maximum drawdown of this distribution, okay, 
around 60, 70%, okay? And you don't want that, okay? Maybe even if you give a bad rate to the risk of win, you will still have an average of seven. So you need to always keep in mind that the only rule is the rule that you have decided, okay? Here, it's very good to give you an idea to quantify, but if some of these metrics are really too high according to your goals in terms of risk or performance, so feel free to just drop this trading strategy because it's better to don't use a trading strategy than to use it and to be stressed by that all the time. So now let's take a look to the second backtest. I create a small overview in one picture of this backtest and we'll analyze it together. So first of all, here we can see that the upward trend is quite stable. Even if we see that we have some drawdown period, okay? So I will give a seven because in my opinion here, I will take a small zoom. The drawdown is a bit too high. Minus 35% is really high because if you have minus 35% in the rock fall optimization, maybe in the risk of win, you will find that you could have much higher drawdown. The second thing is the probability of overfitting. Here, I will give an eight over 10 because it's between five and 10. And if you have a probability of overfitting around 10%, it's quite good in my opinion, okay? So if you have a lower, it's much better. But if you begin to have a probability of overfitting higher than 15% or something like that, it's not so good in my opinion. Then we need to take a look to the other face of the same coin, because as I said, if you have a very low probability of overfitting, but with the odds to have a good sharp ratio, very small also, it doesn't make any sense to use this trading strategy. Here we have 10% of chances to have a sharp ratio below zero, which is quite high. And the average sharp ratio is around 0 0.80, okay? So it's not so bad, but it's not so good in the same time. So I will give seven, but maybe a six, but let's say a seven. Now let's take a look to the Monte Carlo projection. Here we can see that the odds to lose money is close to 20%, okay, after one year, which is very high. So I will give a six maybe a five, but let's say a six, okay? And for the risk of win, we have a good surprise because at the end, this path was one of the worst in terms of drawdown, okay? So here it is our drawdown from the single path backtesting and the other drawdown are generally very low compared to it. So let's say that I give a eight over 10. So the average rate is seven over 10, okay? I did that on purpose. And here you have a dilemma because the strategy seems quite good, but in the same time, it seems a bit risky. So when I have a strategy like that, what I'm doing is I put it on paper trading to see a bit the result, three months, six months, and I will maybe integrate it into my trading bot portfolio, but with a small weight, okay? All of that to say that I accord sometime the weight of the trading strategy in my trading bot portfolio to the metrics of the backtest. This strategy is quite medium, okay? That's why I wanted to give you this example. It can be enough good to be put in live trading, but in the same time, it's a bit risky. Our output are not so good to say that it's a very good trading strategy, okay? So I wanted to show you that it depends also of you if you want to take the risk or not. Now let's talk about our last trading strategy and you will see the real importance of the robustness testing. So here it is one trading strategy that I backtested and I thought it was so important to show you that Okay, we do several, we apply several methods, we do several things, but on purpose. It's not just to say, okay, I did this stuff and this stuff, okay? Take a look to the work for our optimization result. Pretty good upward trend, a bit high drawdown, but still acceptable because when you will add it into your trading bot portfolio, it will reduce 
the drawdown if your assets are not too correlated, we can give really a, a strong aid to this result. But when we go a bit lower and we take a look to the first robustness test, the CPCV, we see a probability of overfitting higher than 20%, okay? Which is not good, really not good. We give a five over 10. Then we see a probability to have a sharp ratio higher than zero, close to 50%, which is really, really not good, okay? Because it means that if you want a sharp ratio above two, you have maybe 20% of chances to have it or 30%, which is really not high, okay? So we can give a three for this one. Then for the Monte Carlo simulation, we have a high risk of losing money after the first year. And the worst here is the risk of ruin. Because in the previous example, we had 25% of drawdown, okay? in the rogue fraud optimization, but it was one of the worst case. But if here you just do a rogue fraud optimization, really the strategy seems really good. But once you begin to apply robustness testing, you can see that it's very, very risky. Your sharp ratio is not high. So the odds that you are profitable using this strategy in live trading are very, very low. And so the third one was the worst. The second one was medium. We don't know if we need to put it or not. So it depends on each of you. If it's your first trading strategy, for sure put it in live trading on a paper trading account and you will just be more familiar with all of this stuff. And if you have 50 trading strategies that you trade already, maybe you can put this one to the trash to be always be the most smart that you can. And the first trading strategy was the best. If you have a trading strategy like that, you can put it on paper trading to go forward in the trading strategy building process. So I hope you like this video. If you have any question, feel free to ask in the comment area on our public Discord community or directly in private to me on LinkedIn. And see you soon in the other videos.